Then are the exam question on the practical skills topic. So this one's about the synthesis of an organic solid. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So the first thing I'll do is the calculation. So we're going to work out how many grams of 2-hydroxybenzoic acid we'll need to use to make 8.1 grams of aspirin, factoring in that percentage yield. And then we'll look at the purification to end up with a pure dry solid product. So the first thing we do is work out the moles of aspirin that we're wanting to make. So mass over MR, 0.045. The yield's 90%, so we're gonna need a little bit more than 0.045 moles of the 2-hydroxybenzoic acid. So we work out the moles that we need by dividing the theoretical moles by 90 and multiplying by 100. So that's coming out at 0.05 moles. So therefore the mass of 2-hydroxybenzoic acid needed, moles times MR, 6.90 grams. So moving on to the purification process now. So we're going to use recrystallization to purify the aspirin. We're told that the aspirin's more soluble in hot water than in cold. So what we're going to do is we're going to dissolve the impure aspirin in a small volume or minimum volume of hot water. We're then going to cool it back down and that's going to reform the aspirin crystals, but crucially the impurities will stay dissolved. We then filter using, you could either say Buchner apparatus or reduced pressure filtration. You then wash the aspirin using cold water now because we don't want it to dissolve now. And remember, it says it wants a dry solid product, so the last thing we'd say is we would allow the aspirin to dry. So for the next part of the question, it involves um, TLC, or analysis of TLC, thin layer chromatography. So we've got some information in the table about the RF values of 2-hydroxybenzoic acid. It's obviously our starting material and the pure aspirin. We've also got their melting point ranges. So for the first part of B, we've got to draw spots on the chromatogram to show how the student arrives at this conclusion that their aspirin is contaminated with a small amount of unreacted 2-hydroxybenzoic acid. So the first thing we need to do is to measure this distance here between the baseline and the solvent front. I've literally just measured the distance on my iPad screen and it's coming out at 60 millimetres. So for the 2-hydroxybenzoic acid with its RF value of 0.3, all I've done is multiplied that by the total distance. I'm getting 18, so I need to draw my spot for 2-hydroxybenzoic acid 18 millimetres from here. Likewise, for the pure aspirin spot, I've got a distance of 45 millimetres from the baseline. Where's that come from? It's the RF value multiplied by the total distance. Obviously, if your distance isn't the same as mine, so if you're not getting 60, you still do the same thing, RF multiplied by the distance. So moving on to the impure aspirin now. So we know we've got aspirin in there, so we need to draw a spot at 45 millimetres. So it's going to have that. And then the fact that it contains a small amount of unreacted 2-hydroxybenzoic acid, all we need to do is draw a faint spot at in my case, 18 millimetres. So obviously that's the pure substance, so it's a strong spot. Small amount would just be a, a weak spot, a faint spot. And then finally, predict the melting point range of the impure aspirin. So I've written up here, impurities, they lower the melting point of a substance, but they also widen the melting range. So you'll notice from the table, it says pure aspirin has a melting point 138 to 140. So the fact that it's melting over this narrow range of two degrees C means that it's pure. So basically all we need to do is choose a melting point that's less than 138. So I'm going for 130 and I want my range to be more than two degrees C. So let's go six. So I'm going to say 130 to 136 degrees C. Obviously there's loads of possible answers you could give there so long as you're lower than the 138 and you're wider than two degrees C for your range. 